Agriculture. It's an important industry that is often forgotten in a world where the average consumer is at least three generations removed from the farm. Today, it's up to us to show the world what we do. This is AgriLive, where we gather to experience different perspectives of agriculture around the globe and work on becoming better storytellers for an essential industry. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to AgriLive. It's been a while. This is Riley Slifka. And if you're new here, prepare to be hopefully amazed by an awesome episode tonight. So joining us here in a quick minute will be Ron Hartung. Excuse me, Ron Schroeder of Hartung Family Farms. And he's a super interesting guy. He's an engineer that works for John Deere. But then on his YouTube channel, we see a lot of red equipment. So we're going to have to ask him what's up with that. Anyway, great to be back, guys. So I got to check my notes here for a couple quick things that I might be forgetting. So AgriLive was gone for a while, and the new plan is to be back to every other week. So that's every other Tuesday, bi-weekly, not weekly, but every other Tuesday at 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Translate that to whatever time zone you need to is when you're going to see some awesome content here on this channel what we do here is review your farm videos so if you have a farm and have an interest in promoting that farm to the general public even other farmers this is an excellent place to be because we're going to stream your videos live on this stream if you want to submit them there's a link in the description below to do that just fill out that form paste the link to your video and we're going to be grabbing those later in the show and ron and i'll be checking them out so be sure to do that. We'll do that towards the end of the show. But anyway, we'll be doing that every other week. And I'm hoping to keep that consistent until December for an excellent, we'll call it a second season of AgriLive. So there'll be hopefully a few improvements here and there. I'm planning to have special guests for every single episode this time. So should be really entertaining episodes. All right, guys. One other thing. Shout out to the moderators in the chat right now. They're going to help keep things running smoothly. So definitely, please feel free to use the chat. Be respectful of others in that chat as well. Speaking of which, let's see who we have in here. IH100, good to see you. Miles, fellow moderator, good to see you as well. Of course, Ron will be in the chat a little bit too. And then we have actually Brian's farming videos I see is in here. How's it going, Brian? Brian makes some awesome content as I'm... Sure, all you guys know, Little Farm Big Cameras, who has always submitted something. He's back, and he's been making some great content as well. So, And then Whiteman Photography, also a regular here on AgriLive. We also have Jackie Jordan, Farmer Eric. Good to have you guys here. So without further ado, I think it's time to bring Ron in from Hartung Family Farms. So, Ron, I think we can hear you now. How's it going? Oh, good. How about yourself, Riley? Doing good. So Ron's joining us on a phone call. Unfortunately, he couldn't get video chat to work where he's at tonight, but he is able to be on phone with us, and he does have a version of the stream that he can watch as well. So he will be able to see a couple of your videos. So awesome, Ron. True. Well, I am a, I'm, cur I'm currently bouncing around in between different fast food restaurants trying to find Wi-Fi to know what uh, I've tried. Starbucks, Panda <laughs> Express, Burger King, and now McDonald's. So I'm, I'm working on it. At least you have those options of places because, yeah, I'm in Bozeman right now where I go to college, but back where my home farm is in the Missouri Breaks country, it is a good hour to McDonald's, and that's about all we have over there. Montana gets pretty remote, so... And we'll talk about that here in a little bit because weren't you in the big sky country here just a week ago? Actually, Not just a couple about days ago. Three days ago. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Ron's recent adventure here in Montana and meeting up with a couple of YouTubers, one of which was the one and only Mr. Nick Welker. The other one was Tony Fast, oh, Fast Ag Montana. Know. So it was a cool trip. Ron's also going to talk to us a little bit about his farm or is it your cousin's farm 
but Hartung Farms. And then a little bit about the YouTube channel he started for that as well. So actually, I don't know if you have the stream up right now. You might be driving actually, but I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and take a cut here. And aha, it does work, sweet. So I think this is a photo of the Hartung Farms right here that you can see. And I don't know if Ron has his stream up and working yet, so I don't know if he knows the photo that I have up, but we'll find out. I have a few, is, is, it the only, is it the one in winter? Yeah, there is snow on the ground. I do not have it. I do not have it up right now, but I know exactly which one. That is the home farm we have right now that my grandpa, when my grandpa moved to the area, started it back in the 50s, I want to say. He moved down about 20 miles south to start a new farm away from his dad, basically just because he's already had two older brothers on that farm, so he had to find someplace different. And this is where he decided. So this is our home farm. You guys can see that's where our main grain storage area, our main dryer, kind of on the left side of the screen. Obviously, this isn't this wasn't taken recently, as you guys can tell. This was taken last December when I was just playing around with the drone a little bit, and I thought it was a pretty cool picture. But it's got basically everything there: our shops in the center, the white uh, building with the green, uh, kind of a green roof. We got a bunch of dip, old sheds, sheds and barns. We store hay, old miscellaneous equipment, and then our main storage shed is that red one there. That's also, I believe, at that time, it was also storing about sixty thousand bushels of corn on the ground. Huh. Wow. So yeah, what all happens on this farm? What do you grow? I think you run cows as well, right? Yep, you can kind of see one feedlot there towards the back. And our, uh, so we run about 700 head of feeder cattle. So a little bit of background on that. So feeder cattle are basically, there's two stages of, calf, of cow production. Your first stage is basically from birth to um, kind of feeder age. So your first year of a calf's life is normally with their mom on a pasture, more than likely. So we, we, we have about 75 cow-calf pairs like that, and then we also feed out about 700 more on top of that. So we take in all of our neighbors' cows, um, kind of a lot of our neighbors around there as well, and we feed out about 700, as I said. And there's actually a feedlot kind of towards the, the brown speck in the middle there. That's, that holds about 200, excuse me, about 200 head of cattle right there. And we got three other locations that also hold cattle. So we awesome. farm, uh, like, I, like I was saying before, we, we farm cattle. We also are pretty big into row crop as well. We farm about 2,500 acres of row crop, usually on average about a third soybeans and then two-thirds corn. We usually have a rotation. Um, every, every, every three years is beans usually, so we like to rotate them around quite often. And, but we also farm about 150 acres of small grains and alfalfa, mainly alfalfa, and all that's just to support our cattle business. Awesome. Yeah, definitely a cool farm. And where are you located for those of you that want to know? Extreme Eastern Iowa. So when people hear Iowa, a lot of the time they think flat corn ground, but this is not the case. We have about 500 acres that are pretty flat, typical Iowa ground, but we actually farm not as quite as bad as you got in the breaks, but uh, we got quite a bit of uh, hills up in that area as well. But yeah, it's extreme Eastern Iowa about in the middle of the state, 20 miles away from the Mississippi River. Awesome. Actually, I've been to eastern Iowa before. It's awesome country, not completely flat, but yeah, you don't have 1,000-foot drop-offs either. But yeah, so the farm that I've yeah, been to it. in eastern Iowa was actually, it's called Cinnamon Ridge Farms. They do quite a bit of things, and they're actually fairly plugged into John Deere as well. But they're in Donahue, yeah. which is right out of Quad Cities. And that is about 30 miles from my farm, or so I drive by there quite often, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're awesome people. I've been able to make a couple videos for them before. It was a kind of a family connection of how we know them. So really cool people. For those of you new to the channel and want to check out an awesome video, I've got one. I got to remember what I called it, but I think it was how this dairy farm is mastering agritourism because they do a lot of foreign tours with people who come and tour john deere and then john deere sends them up their way interesting stuff all right down in the chat we've got people from all over the place which is awesome so new york tim thanks for joining us so brian for brian's farming videos said ron i thought the welkers adopted you was going to start calling you ron welker yeah you were you were there for a little while weren't you oh yeah about a day and a half 
Yeah. It seemed like forever, though, because yeah. Nick, Nick just drags on and on and on. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Nick's an awesome guy. We can actually go ahead and talk about some of that, and I guess, because you're also an engineer for John Deere, and so that would have been the reason why you, you were correct. traveling. But you had some extra time to go out and visit a couple other fellow YouTubers in Montana. So, yeah, I'm going to see if yeah. I can find some of your supporting photos for this. Um, by the way, were you ever able to get a copy of the stream working? I did, yes. I am currently in the high school parking lot. I kind of gave up at all the fast food restaurants. So, <laughs> so you're like, just stealing high school Wi-Fi it. or just streaming yep. off of LTE. <laughs> Cool. All yeah, right, let me go ahead and switch back to this. So, basically, you flew into Gray Falls, right? You are correct. All right. So, what happened after that? Yeah. So I was so kind of a little bit of background about this. So I can't touch a lot about it, but basically, as Riley said, I am an engineer for Deer. I work specifically on combines and prototype combines, which I'm sure all of you have probably seen a version on the internet. If not, follow Keith Warner. He's got a ton of them out there. But anyway, I can't speak a lot to it, but basically I work on prototype combines and my job, t the duties of my job take me traveling to different places, testing them out, putting them through their paces, um, running them with different farmers, going to different areas. I've been to Central Texas, Northwest Texas, Montana, North Dakota, and going to be going to in Illinois along with Canada this year as well. So I have a lot of different things going there, but anyway, uh, about two, three weeks ago, I was actually out and flew into Great Falls, as Riley was saying. Um, I was, we have a couple of machines out in that area, went and visited them, and then I decided I had, had a weekend of free to me, so I decided to go visit the famous Walker Farms. And I'm not sure, I think I lost the feed, Riley, so I'm not sure. Oh, oh I no. Pa I hit pause on the. Uh, okay, I got a picture of Columbine's up right now. I wasn't cycling through. I just, I just had your face. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I can't, I'm about. 20 seconds behind the actual feed itself guys so i right now i can see the picture this is actually bob welker right now driving clifford and i'm kind of in the back there driving b-spine so i basically showed up on walker's farms and i pretty much said hey i'm here for a day and a half treat me as you would as you would a farm laborer so it was actually a blast i mean my first hour there leg arms and i were just climbing up a wheat pile stuffing in and trying to stuff an extra thousand bushels of wheat into a fifteen thousand bushel building which was already full that was a blast, but anyway, these guys, it was just a, it was just a lot of fun. Got to see quite a bit of things. Um, I definitely have, uh, I have, I ended up getting about four YouTube videos out about them, just kind of showing off all the different things that we did, but kind of different highlights where we shot their cannon. I got to sh drive uh, beast spine. We got to fight a fire, which was a real, I mean, it's dangerous and kind of bad as it sound. It was actually a lot of fun. Got to fight a fire. Um, Stay overnight in the big metropolis of Shelby, Montana, which is, correct me if I'm wrong, but is it like 3,000 people or so? And there's yeah, not a I lot think of people. It, I think right at 3,000, yeah. Yeah, but they yeah. do have a pizza hut, which was really good the night I got, the one night I stayed there. Nice, but, yeah. Yeah, so we got there. So it was it was just a blast, and I, I've talked to those guys for probably two, three hours or so. If you guys ever get a chance to meet them at some point, do it. just do yourself a favor. It's just, they're awesome to talk to, great guys. I mean, Brian... Brian's met him. Riley, have you met him before? Yep, I've been to their farm twice, actually, but those were both oh, pretty really? short instances. The first time was actually back last fall. I actually did do a bit of a video collab type thing and made his channel, and that was awesome. We talked about drones for a little while, and then I nice. stopped by and kind of interrupted one of his live streams which was kind of interesting. Oh, really? I probably won't do that again. Oh, I think I remember seeing that one. Yeah, it was. he was spraying, and I was in the area. I was actually working out of Cutbank. Speaking of Cutbank, somebody in this chat is from Cutbank. That is awesome. But I was in Cutbank working on a project for actually Big Tractor Power. Jason, awesome guy. And that footage isn't going to be released until oh, nice. next year, but I was filming an awesome farming operation up in that area. And on my way back, I stopped in Shelby and decided, or I stopped in Shelby and I tried to call Nick and he didn't answer his phone. And so I pulled up YouTube for, of all things. I don't know why. And saw he was <laughs> streaming on top of the hill. 
So <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. I'm like, okay, well, I could either just drop this and head back home and I'll meet with him another time. I wanted to drop off some hats. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to try and make it up there. But I could either do that or I could drive up the hill and just meet him on the stream, which I'm actually not a huge proponent of. So guys, if Nick's streaming, I would definitely get his permission first before going to where he's at. Just FYI, PSA. But I did it and Nick was fine with it. We rolled, played right along with it. But it was funny because he was streaming in his water truck and pulling that back up to the farm. And I was behind the water truck following him while watching the stream while driving. Probably also something you shouldn't do. But it was it was kind of trippy. It was funny. And then he had no idea I was back there either. So, but anyway, That's yeah. Awesome. Welkers are awesome guys. Yep. And another funny story that I'll tell real quick is Welkers' closest neighbors. Actually, one of them, my roommate, grew up living right next to Welkers. So really? he's been out there. Actually, he went out there just last week and helped him out with a few things for an afternoon. And he got to drive the big bud and help out with a couple other things. So nice. yeah, he had fun. It was awesome. Is he, is but, he the one? Is, does he have a full, a versatile full wheel drive with a what flexible drill? Um, are you talking about the neighbor? The neighbor actually doesn't farm. He was just, yeah. Oh, I gotcha. He, they just I had just, like I a just small... asked because there's there a versatile with a flexicoil drill like two miles away just sitting in the middle of a field, which I found very hmm. odd. But I imagine shed space comes at a premium out there, as I learned. So, I yeah, mean, you got to do does. what you got to do. There's a lot of equipment that sits outside out here. But anyway, kind of a small world and actually the same situation with Tony, one of his neighbors I actually knew from college too. So, all right. Oh, well, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find a couple other photos here that are unique to your trip um yeah. oh actually yes i basically or you can just yeah go ahead i'll say i basically spent like i said a day and a half with welkers got some pretty cool footage and i was just heading through to north dakota i talked to nick a little bit i've never met tony fast before but i've, I've talked to him before via instagram and stuff like that but i just haven't met the guy but anyway i was just driving by and I, I told him where i was heading through and he said it was only like 20 minutes out of my way to just stop by and see him so i basically just stopped by and saw him got to meet him for the first time and ended up they were in the middle of a moving from about a 20 mile move so i ended up working out but i basically hopped out of welker's 8230 with a 45 foot mac down head and hopped in to Tony Fast, 8230 with a 45 foot Mac down head. It was just kind of cool seeing basically the exact same heads or the exact same machine, same heads, or pretty much same head. Welkers are rigid heads. Uh, Tony's got a flex head because he does uh, peas and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of cool seeing different operations. Tony, actually, Tony, his operation had a grain cart, so it was actually really cool to see the, be the difference and the benefit of having a grain cart versus not having a grain cart so close together because it was not even 12 hours later, I was driving tony's machine so it was kind of cool yes yeah, so i stopped awesome. in stopped in with tony um saw him while he's in the middle of wheat harvest and then i actually stopped back a week and a day ago and that's what this picture is and when they were harvesting canola so i've never seen canola harvest before and that's what this like i said that's what this crop is here and it was just really really cool i mean you guys i'm releasing a video on thursday about it you guys are gonna have to check that out but canola is a really cool crop it's really bushy really abrasive hard on the combine that's for sure mm -hmm. especially on the front end equipment that's gathering it in i mean it's just it's an extremely difficult crop to feed and process so it was a really cool thing to see nice yeah canola is definitely an interesting crop we've been growing it for a couple years now and unfortunately i think we might not be able to do that anymore due to the fact that we don't have a good place to sell it just because of how remote uh, we are sense. and our elevator that we do haul to for everything else just hates it for some reason. We're the only producers that sell to that yeah. elevator and it's just by a contract through Cebus where we buy the seed. And yep. yeah, it's interesting. They just, and I mean, I can see it because they have to clear out an 80,000 bushel bin of barley to put maybe wow. 10,000 bushels of canola in from us. So 
I don't know why more people don't sell to the elevator that we haul to. There's a couple that haul it a long, long ways, all the way to Great Falls from our farm. That's ridiculous because that's two and a half hour drive. Wow, that's but yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks. Hopefully, hopefully we can get this figured out because canola is an awesome crop, and it's really awesome up in northeast Montana where Tony is too. So, I actually got to visit Tony's farm as well because I just happened to be in that area. <laughs> awesome guy. Nice. And an awesome family uh, too. He's a great so. guy. To- Oh, yeah, definitely. Great guy to talk to. I mean, he's a pretty good fabricator, too. He was working on some shop projects the one rainy day I was there. So it's a really cool guy. Got a cool channel. He does his farm hay, which I did not realize that they had hay in Montana. Complete shocker to me. I mean, I'm pretty really? oblivious, but uh, I mean, it was pretty cool. Yeah. We actually put up some alfalfa hay as well, and that's just because it's handy for us to work with the cattle operation on our end, too. By the way, I was thinking about your... Um, yeah. 8230 thing like leave and go jump in someone else's you're gonna have to do that again next year yep. but next year you're gonna have to make an extra stop in between <laughs> do all three yep <laughs> oh that would be fun that would be awesome i know you're on a really, bit of a time really cool. constraint too on the last trip and we are a little out of the way because you'll have to run probably an hour and a half ish south of the high line or two hours south of the high line yep. probably so but yeah, that's Montana's a really cool state. So glad you were able to visit. So I've got yeah, it was a really really cool state to drive across. I mean, I it was like an eight hour drive from Great Falls to where I was testing at, and I I drive that again in a heartbeat. It was just really cool seeing the different terrains, all anything from dry land to flood irrigation to pivot irrigation processes. Hey, co- hey, I even saw some corn and soybeans in eastern Montana. I mean, all your small crops, false crops, just a really cool, diverse area Mm -hmm. across half a state. Yeah. I didn't even know they grew things in the northeast corner because, like, the mid-east Montana, (laughs) that's just all desert. But once you get north enough, you start to look a little more like Canada. So, but, yeah, they do some awesome. (laughs) The small grain and pulse world is awesome for sure. Now, if we can just get good markets for that stuff, that'd be great. But, yeah. Not right now. The wheat is horrible and everything else is not much better. That's kind of, that's actually a big push of why we're even seeing things like lentils and canola and peas in the state of Montana. So, all right. Well, I think we should definitely open this chat up to ask Ron anything. So, especially if you use the hashtag ask Ron in the chat. (laughs) <laughs> I'll be sure to read off those questions and that. we can answer them here on the stream. So hey, there you go. And I gotta disable something here real quick. Computer's making noises that's going straight into the stream. All right. So let's talk about your YouTube channel. How like why did you start it? What was the main motivation there? And how long ago was it started? Because it's an awesome channel, so and what do you do on it for those of you that are new yeah. to Hard Tongue Family Farms? Sure. So I basically started it. I was contemplating it for about two years. Ever so, I got into farm YouTubing when I started watching Ryan Kuster at How, Kuster at How Farms Work. And for those of you guys who don't know, Ryan's only about an hour away from my place. So I'm hoping we get a farm visit at some point in the future. Just a little sneak peek. But but anyway, so I've been watching his videos for about three years or so, and I was like, you know, it's kind of a cool thing i really wanted to do it we have a pretty diverse farming operation with with the amount of crops and animals that we grow and raise and stuff like that so i've always tinkered with it but actually not a lot of people know this but i got my first start on youtube filming videos for john deere so not a lot of people know this but i actually have nine videos that i made produced filmed and everything up on the john deere youtube channel that's awesome i can um, i'll maybe I'll maybe do a video on it at some point. At least it's kind of hard to show the link, but if you basically Google carbon or YouTube carbon fiber, John Deere carbon fiber boom adjustment, you'll actually hmm. see me. That's one of them. But anyway, I took, I put all a couple service videos on deer and that got me kind of excited about and passionate about video editing and getting your message out to a broad audience. And then basically I got a GoPro and I just started doing it because I felt like there was a big gap between as Riley hit on it before, producers and consumers on kind of where farming comes from, why farmers are are not polluting the world and destroying, sending soil down to the the Gulf of Mexico and chemicals and all that. 
I just feel like there's a big gap between producers and consumers, and I wanted to help do my part and just give another positive voice for agriculture. Yeah, that's awesome. And we need all of that that we can get. So if any of you out there are interested in doing some advocacy for agriculture or just sharing your story about what you do on your farm, first off, YouTube's an excellent medium to do that, among other excellent mediums. Actually, I read something that... I guess YouTube is the most popular, if you call it a social media site, YouTube is the most popular social media site among rural consumers of media, which was kind of interesting. There's definitely a big wave that's happening, but yeah, it's awesome to see all these farm channels grow to where they are today. And we've definitely been in a revolution of that in this last year that, yeah, we've seen a lot of channels grow a ton. By the way, I'm getting a couple questions here that we can address in the chat here. So... Somebody is asking you, uh, what's the first one I saw here? Ask Ron, how close are you to harvest? This comes from Just a Little Farm in Kansas. Hi, Kansas. I am actually, I'd say we are a good month minimum from harvest. We are about two weeks behind on average this year. So we actually have a custom chopping business as well. Um, Riley will probably pull that picture up at some point. But we have a custom chopping business, and usually we start that around or the first of September and we haven't even started yet. We're probably another half a week out from starting there. Maybe on Sunday we might try, but so, I mean, if that pushes, if that's behind, which it is, we have four weeks of silage chopping to do for our, our custom chopping people as long as well, along with ourselves. And before we can even think about harvest. So I'd say we're probably ballpark October 15th is when we're targeting. Hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. I actually don't really know much about when exactly you start in the Midwest over there. That's what I really want to experience one day, actually, is fall harvesting, or I should just say, uh, like, harvesting corn and beans in the Midwest. Just way different from up here in the wheat belt part of the country, for sure. So, all right, we got another question here, probably multiple other questions I've got an Ask Ron editing software. You, w- I want to start filming, but need some editing help. So what do you edit your videos in, Ron? Yeah, so I, um, I actually edit my videos in Adobe Premiere Pro, which for a new guy starting out, I wouldn't 100% recommend, mainly because it's a very intricate software. Really, it can do a lot, but it, it is very hard to get used to, and it's not a very good... Um, I guess initial starter. Um, the thing with the thing, the reason why I started with it and kept with it is because um, that's what I that's what Deer gave me as a kind of a demo so, software. I believe it it's pretty expensive. It's like two hundred bucks a year, and for initially starting out, you can get free programs that do do what you need to do to get started out for like I said, free. So I I wouldn't recommend starting with that, but I do use Adobe Premiere Pro, and I highly doubt I ever see myself going away from it. Yeah, Premiere Pro, once you know the basic ins and outs of editing, it is an awesome piece of software, and that's what I use for all of my professional work and most of my slightly less professional stuff, too. It's just once you know the basic ins and outs of video editing, it's a really easy one to use. Now, for starting out, if you want a recommendation on software, first off, that's going to depend. So my question to you is, number one, are you on PC or Mac? Because if you're on Mac iMovie is actually pretty great to start iMovie. in. Yep. So if you have iMovie, start there, and then you can either go to Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro from there, depending on your preference. If you're on PC, unfortunately, that gets a little more complicated because we really don't have a good freebie for PC right now. One that I've been recommending is HitFilm, and they have a free version of... It's called HitFilm, and that one is... Fairly, I think it's fairly easy to do some basic editing in. And there's like, Wii Video is like a cloud-based one that um, actually I think in one of my classes here at college, that's what they're recommending we use for when we have to edit a video there. But yeah, if you if you do have a Mac, iMovie is just awesome. And that's for free if you have a Mac, so. Yeah, and I see he has a PC, so. I think in the, I see a couple in the comments. Wondershare is a good one. Um, I've heard of Power Director. I'm pretty sure that's what Welker's used for a while. Yeah. So, Power I mean, Director. There's, there's plenty of good options out there. 
Actually, Power Director is the best in between, and I have used it way back in the day, and I'm sure it's way better now. But Power Director is paid, but it's less than a hundred bucks, if I remember right. Uh, and it's a pretty powerful piece of software, and does quite a bit of what Adobe Premiere can do. Nick Welker eventually had to switch over to Premiere Pro just because Premiere is, is faster. It's just a honestly a better piece of software, but obviously way more expensive as well. But Power right. Director does work. It will get the job done. And it's great for people who need to learn how to edit video and the ins and outs of that. And I'd love to do some editing tutorials in the future. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully that happens sometime in the future. Maybe I'll even record, do a couple sessions of editing this 2019 Harvest video I'm putting together. So, yeah, editing. I think that'd be a great idea, Riley. Like even for like us kind of more experienced Editors. I wouldn't call myself experienced by any means, but I mean, heck, watching a YouTube video, you pick up just so many small tricks, even if you already know how to do it, how to do it quicker type of thing. So I'd 100% support that. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, we'll see if we can make that a live stream. I don't know if it'd be part of Agri Live or its own thing, or if I just record a video and upload it. Actually, someday in the future, I think it would be awesome to do something along the lines of a ag-based online film school. That would basically be the next step after this Agri Live here when we're going to be reviewing some of these guys' farm videos here in a little bit. I think that'd be really cool. That would basically be a paid course. I don't know how much it would be, but people could sign up for the course and I would have a bunch of tutorials on how to do a lot of these things from making the videos to the YouTube side of things and being strategic about pushing your content out there. So kind of an interesting idea I've had in the back of my head, but... We'll definitely start with some editing tutorials, probably. All right, so just a reminder, you can use the hashtag AskRon if you have any questions in the chat. So. Yeah, I see there is, do I hunt and do I have hogs, hog problems where I farm? So by, down in Texas where I was at, um, there are a lot of hogs down there, but up in eastern Iowa, there are next to none. The biggest issue that we have is actually deer. Deer, as Hinch and Farm, who I see is in the chat, he actually farms about 10 miles, actually from one of our farms, about two miles down the road. But as he can attest, we have a lot of whitetail deer problems. There are some of our fields where we lose about the first 16 rows of corn to deer every single year. So because of that reason and among others, I actually do choose to deer hunt as well. And I do put, so my farming channel isn't just farming. It's basically, I want to include everything that goes on around the farm. And that does include hunting. Just about everyone in my family does hunt. So it's just... Um, Yes, yeah, so yeah, to answer your question, I do deer hunt, turkey hunt, as well as some pheasant hunting as well. But not awesome. so much anymore because they're, they've really gone away from in our area. But they're starting to come back, so I hope they do. Yeah, I haven't been hunting in a few years, but it's awesome up here. Like, have you ever, like, if you had the opportunity to do so, would you hunt up here in Montana? 100%. In fact, it's been a bucket list. I've always wanted to go elk hunting at some point. So it's cool. I've heard there's some great spots in that area. It's definitely cool. All right. Well, I think we got so far off on a tangent that I got to remember, I think we were talking about your farm a little bit a while back, or we we're talking about how you started on YouTube and you kind of answered to that. So here's a yeah. question I have. And what advice do you have for all these guys who want to start a YouTube channel and have no idea where to start or have started a YouTube channel and just aren't really getting traffic and would love to have a bit more of an audience? Yeah, I think that's so just everyone keeps in mind that everyone starts somewhere. So I'll give you a little bit on my story. I mean, I started doing YouTube videos religiously for, I'd say, starting in April of two years ago. So April of 27, no, April of 2018. And I'd say for the first, I don't know, till October of that year. So I don't know what that is, first eight months or so. I was basically, you know, I, I produced pretty steady content. And I produced, I don't know, they were probably only getting five, 600 a year or a videos of, of views of video. But it was, it was steadily climbing. But basically what I did is I was consistent. I had a good message. I tried to be myself. I wasn't trying to be anyone else. And I basically just was consistent in releasing videos. And then all of a sudden I had a couple of videos that just for some reason, nothing different than anything I have been doing, but it just for some reason, it stuck in YouTube's algorithm, threw it out to so many people and that's actually my most viewed video right now and that actually kind of jump-started me so i guess my biggest advice for 
YouTubers that are just starting out or wanting to grow their channel is, you know, just be yourself, be consistent, you know, have good quality content that you like, like don't do it for the money or anything like that. Because if you do it for the, if you try to do it for the money or for a business, it's never going to work because I mean, I'm, I'm right now, I'm still doing this as a hobby and I will always do it as a hobby. I don't see myself ever turning this into a full-time job or anything, but it's just, the biggest thing is you got to enjoy what you're doing because if you don't, the time you put into it, like I can't even imagine how much time you put in per video, Riley, but myself, I'd say it's anywhere from four to eight hours or so. So it, it, it definitely takes some time, but it, you just got to have a passion. You got to love what you're doing and you just got to be consistent at it. I mean, viewers will come if that's what you, if that's what you want. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. long tangent for an answer there. That's an awesome answer though. And yeah, definitely, guys. Just stick with it, and eventually, the thing will grow. If you give it what it needs, then it will grow. And yeah, it does take a ton of time. Even these live streams, that it's a lot of work. But if you have a passion for it, then you do it, and there are benefits to that. So, and I try to make YouTube videos whenever I can here on my home farm, but. Yeah, it it's not near so as much as other people just because I am off the farm and doing other things. But it's awesome that you're able to make it work pretty well, Ron, despite also it, having a career with John Deere. It, it's definitely hard, that's for sure. So, like, when I'm on the farm, at some point I try to do different things per video. I don't just want to put videos just to put videos out there. So what I, a lot of times what I'll do is, let's just say I'm only up, able to go up to the farm twice this week, but I want to get four videos out of that. I'll basically just pick a thing. So one will be, like, a vlog throughout the day doing what I'm doing, and then the second one will be maybe touring a building or um, going, doing the ins and out of a piece of equipment or something of, of a question I've gotten beforehand. And I basically try to stretch it out and – get content that viewers and people want to watch but not have it where it controls my life and i'm up there every day because i do have a full-time job i have a wife i have a house i do have stuff that is off the farm so i gotta i do have other priorities that need to happen but i do want to keep this youtube hobby going and it's, it's fun it's really fun interacting with all the viewers as you're finding out riley i mean you 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 have a great channel going on here but it's fun interacting with everyone and having that i don't know that common platform that everyone kind of shares and shares experiences over but it's just it's definitely difficult not being on the farm full-time it is and especially when there's distance involved like that's a three and a half hour trip for me from where i'm sitting right now to go back to my home farm so i'm really not there all that often outside of something like harvest it's awesome that i've been coming back for harvest every year and helping with that trying to make a video there but yeah it's in my particular situation, I basically just say I'm not going to be the guy that's able to do the everyday farm vlogs. So I'm trying to find other ways to stay active in the farm video and promoting agriculture realm, but they look different. Agri Live is definitely one of the things that seems to be working pretty well as something that doesn't necessarily require me being on the farm all the time. And I'd love to find some others as well to make some other videos on the side in addition to AgriLife that don't take hours upon hours of time. So, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. I see the next, another question I see is a very common question that I get quite a bit because I am a John Deere combine engineer. It's actually, I believe Derek Timmerman asked this, what combine do I prefer a deer or a case? So a little bit back to my channel. If anyone hasn't watched it yet, we do run red equipment back home but I work at Deer, so it's a really interesting situation. The biggest reason why that is is our dealership, closest dealership to our hometown or to our farm is, is, a, is a red dealership. It's two minutes away. Closest Deer dealer is over 20 minutes away, and that does make a difference. And we've been running red. We've had a good, good relationship with it. Would I like to try more Deer equipment? And do I think there are some pieces of equipment out there that Deer is much better than Case? Yes, I do. Is it just my own personal opinion? Yes, it is. <laughs> so there's different things that I can't go into specifics because there'll be some there's basically in the contract and my of my employment with deer I can't really say a lot of specifics but basically I do think that deer has a better combine especially a better all-around combine are there different crops and different conditions that case does beat deer in my opinion yes I think there is 
But do I think deer is a better overall combine? I do believe so. Yes. Hmm. Now does that? Now does yeah. that? Uh, um, is that encompassing all crops? No. But in, does that compare between all different combines? Also, no. But I feel like just from my own personal experiences, yeah, I, I, I would prefer a re- green combine. But as everyone hmm. knows, green paint does cost a lot more. So that's yeah. all I'm going to say there. I almost say it's like the <laughs> apple of farm machinery. Like, it's just an <laughs> all-around excellent experience running green paint. Like, we love our green paint on our farm, but not everything on our farm is green paint because dollar signs. So, yeah. But John Deere makes some awesome stuff. And yeah, I'm sure it's awesome with you being able to see yeah. what you see as an engineer for John Deere. And yeah, I'd have so many questions on that. But yeah, there's disclosure issues <laughs> in talking about it, some of the prototypes you've seen. And it's, re- it's really cool. And I really hope someday that I can talk more about it. I'm, I mean, maybe someday I'll be able to open up more about it because I have a lot of stories and a lot of cool history to go through. But it's just like I said, you know, I, I do like my job. I want to keep working at deer. And if I do start saying some of that stuff, it, my job will be no more. So <laughs> maybe yeah. someday. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's interesting. And we've always had, or the last couple of years for our harvest, we've had a prototype New Holland combine come out. And I think this year it was fine, but last year there was definitely a little bit of drama about whether or not we could get footage, or I could get footage of that combine and release it to YouTube. So kind of interesting stuff there. Uh, it was a you, it was a 2020 so. model twin rotor New Holland, and I think most of the prototype stuff was actually had to do with black boxes inside the cab and just collecting data. But I do believe there was a couple yep. exterior features on that combine which were different. So. Ooh. Yeah, I'm sure there's a couple places where I might have accidentally leaked it, but it was a minor. <laughs> it was a minor deal, and the engineers that were working on that combine did not know what exactly the agreement with CNH was as far as basically media yeah. in the area. But I ended up just not Makes releasing sense. any up close footage of it just to avoid any conflict that could be there. But I'm sure yep. I'm sure there's stuff that you do that has some very strict rules, especially with John Deere. So, oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's not it's not a secret that Deere's always working on new prototypes of different things. I mean, there's been leaked pictures all over the place. You don't have to look too hard. I'm sure some of you guys have even seen them. So, I mean, it's just yeah. I can't speak a lot to it, but there are like it's just really cool working in the, the experimental world, the next best, the next big thing coming from whatever and being able to change and put my hand to it like this. Whenever my, whenever this next machine that I'm working on comes out, I'll be able to walk up to it and say, Hey, I had a part in this, 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 and this, I can walk up and physically touch it. Say I made a difference here. And that's just a really cool, the really cool part about my job. Yeah, that's awesome. I see in the chat, this is actually my brother. He's correcting 2020 model combine was a conventional, not a twin rotor. Actually, we're both right because oh. this year's prototype was a conventional and it laid straw down awesome. It was it was a great machine. For, I can believe it. We laid down barley straw and bailed that up. So it did well with that. I... Last year's combine for 2018 harvest was a twin rotor prototype from New Holland. But interesting stuff, nice. for sure. Anyway, I want to just send out a quick reminder for people out there that here in just a few minutes, we'll be watching your videos and we'll be talking about them. We can tell you how to improve them and what's great about them. And it also gives everyone a bit of a unique perspective on agriculture around the world. I already see we have a submission from France, so that's going to be interesting. And then a few others have just recently submitted as well. I'd love to have some new people submit as well. So be sure to submit your video. I'm going to send a link right here in the chat that you can click on and you just have to paste your link and we'll be watching as many of those as we can here shortly. But before that, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up with some of Ron's experience. So be sure to use hashtag ask Ron and we'll be able to have Ron answer your questions. And if you have a question for me, then that's cool as well. We do have one from Hinchton Farms. Ask Ron, does he plan on buying or getting into the farm full time? 
Well, Cameron, my neighbor, um, it is actually, my wife and I recently did invest in the farm a little bit. We bought a couple head of cattle and we do are, we are in talks of potentially, I mean, there's always a chance it's all in farming in our area. It's all about opportunity. All the land around us is all spoken for. So it's all about opportunity and really just, we are interested in it. It just depends on if the right price, right time, right everything, honestly. But yes, I, I do plan on investing at some point a form or fashion in the future. And as far as being full-time, I doubt it'll ever happen until I retire at Deer. Again, I don't know exactly. Um, who knows what the future holds? Who knows what two years down the road holds? But mm -hmm. I'd say for right now, I'm in a pretty unique situation where I can work full-time at Deer and only be 40 minutes from the farms. I mean, that's a pretty cool situation. And my job's pretty flexible where I can work in the morning but be out and harvest in the afternoon. So I do like that aspect about it. And do I see myself giving up at any point in any near future? It's going to be pretty tough, but I'd say no. Well, that's awesome that you have close access to the farm and are able to have a job where there's some good off-farm income as well. That'd be awesome if, for example, I could continue to do freelance video and also farm part-time as well. And yeah, there are some options with that, but it's very difficult when you are three hours away from the farm, or at least where I sit here right now. And then if I'm on the farm, I'm far away from things like airports and just larger bodies of population. So Montana's an awesome state. That, I guess, is one of its drawbacks. Anyway, I do yes, see... Yes, and cell phone service. Cell phone service is very hard to find out there. Oh, yeah, we don't have cell service on our farm, or most of our <laughs> farm. If you're up high enough on a hill, you can actually get pretty good LTE, and I can stream all the farm videos that I want while sitting in the truck waiting to be loaded to head out to the bin. But if you're in a low spot I... or in the town of Winifred, that's our hometown, no cell service. Okay. That's crazy. Nice. So... That's Montana for you. It's, yeah, we just don't have the population density to be able to cover the whole state with cell towers. So um, I do see a couple other questions. I don't, did we address uh, Randy here? He's asking, what's the most unusual crops that you have been involved in harvesting? Ooh, I don't think we've ever addressed it. Um, I guess myself, personally, I haven't been in any really unusual crops. It's been really just your five core crops of barley, canola, wheat, corn, and soybeans have only really been the five crops that I've harvested before, but I've been, I'd say the most unusual that I've ridden in have probably had to be potato harvest. That was a really oh, cool operation awesome. where, you know, corn, soybeans, for every combine or harvester, you need like one to two trucks, I'd say, maybe a grain cart, but for potato harvest, every harvester you have needs to have at least seven to 10 trucks supporting it. You can load a truck in about two minutes. And these are hmm. like fully loaded triple axle uh live bottom trucks it's it, it was a really cool i got to see it out in washington about two years ago it was just a really cool country and really cool crop to see harvested yeah that'd be awesome so i hope so that much... directly answer your question but i hope that kind of gives you a little bit of snippet in that yeah there's so much that happens in washington that i haven't seen either and i'm not even that far away from washington so i need to <laughs> i need to take a trip out there somewhere if there's any connections that we have here with agri studios in washington that'd be i hear it's eastern washington there's just a lot of super productive stuff out there and then i guess oh yeah south on of the other side too it's just an incredibly fertile area even just driving around it's really cool you see anything from corn soybeans wheat to potatoes marijuana to there's honestly there's so vineyards orchards uh there's just tree grows there's so much crop diversity out there it's really cool yeah i suppose you haven't seen any industrial hemp is actually starting to take quite a few waves in the montana area if people can grow it as in climate wise but yeah it's there's a bunch of interesting stuff that is over there in washington oh, yeah. and then i guess popping up here too but yeah interesting stuff um oh here's a good question we need to know, Ron, when you're going to convert your farm, the Hartung Farms, all John Deere. Better be happening soon here. Well, oh yeah, 100%. Deere's, Deere's giving us brand new machines for next year. Oh, I mean, uh, it's, it's just... all going to be a big sponsorship, <laughs> right? But that's exactly right. You know how <laughs> Zach's getting like a grain card or anything like that? We're getting everything. Now I'm just kidding. But basically, it's, 
as I touched on a little bit before, A, I'm not the one right, making the decisions and writing the checks, so it's inevitably not my call whatsoever. Um, but honestly, I, I find it being a hard sell. We might demo stuff in the future if other – if uh, I know we've talked about potentially trying stuff out, but really having our dealership being two minutes away, it's, it's incredibly tough to find someone who has – as we have as good of a relationship with, who is as good a service as they are to us. And like I said, being two minutes away to all the parts you need is pretty tough to beat compared to being 25, 30 minutes away, which is the next closest dealership. So great question. Maybe someday, but I, in the near future, I highly doubt it. Interesting. Yeah, if only you could have a farm with just all brand new, same brand equipment. That would just be cool to see just for the sake of what it would look like. But not realistic, that's for sure. Anyway, Ron, we're going to take a short break, actually, because it's about time to watch some of these farm videos. So what's going to happen is we're going to take probably about a three minute break. And when I come back, when we come back, I'll have some videos queued up and ready to check out. And it sounds like Ron might be able to watch them with us. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to take a quick break, maybe if I can figure my thing out. I got the Elgato Stream Deck now. Uh, camera's over here. Yeah, it's out of focus, whatever. Anyway, Elgato Stream Deck, it's really helping things out here. So if you guys stream, this is an awesome little piece of tech for sure. But all right, guys, break time. Thanks for tuning in to Agri Live. We'll be right back as we're currently preparing content for the stream. We are always looking for support to help expedite processes like this as much as possible. Please consider supporting the stream by leaving a super chat with a dollar amount of your choice. It's a great way to ensure that we'll still be around and still be sharing agriculture from around the globe in the future. To ensure that you don't miss a future stream, consider subscribing by hitting the button below as well as enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Hey guys, quick voice announcement. We'll be back in about two more minutes. So meanwhile, be sure to submit a video. Thank you. All right, guys, welcome back to Agri Live. By the way, if you're just joining us, we have Ron from the Hartung Family Farms YouTube channel talking. We just got done talking about a bunch of what he's done with his YouTube channel and his career as an engineer for John Deere. Actually, um, a lot of the career John Deere engineer stuff is a secret because he works on all these top secret prototypes, which is pretty cool. Anyway, 
He is currently gone at the moment, actually. He had to take a short break himself, but he should be coming back here. And he should hopefully be sticking with us to watch some of your guys' videos that we have queued up here if his phone doesn't die. So anyway, I have four of them picked out, and we have a few others after that if we have time. If we don't, then those can go to the next episode. The ones that I have, the ones that I'm going to prioritize this time are the ones who submit the least to AgriLive. So we're going to go ahead and start with Just a Little Farm in Kansas is back with another submission. And he is talking about doing some custom work. Let's see if, uh, let me check real here. Yeah, just says doing some custom work. So we're going to find out what that's all about here in one quick moment here all right here we go let's watch this so some custom haying work that's what's going on here all right ron can we hear you again I thought I heard it. Oh, uh, you sound a little quiet this time. Maybe that's my problem. What about now? Now we can hear you pretty loud and clear. Nope, it's probably me. Yep. Sweet. You're back. Ron's back. So, Ron, we're watching an awesome John Deere 4250, I want to say is what that is. Yep, that's a 4250 pulling a swing ton. I didn't pay attention. I think it's a rotary swather cutting some hay in Kansas. So, some awesome drone footage too. Just Little Farm in Kansas is one of those newer YouTube channels, I believe. He's submitted before. And he just does some awesome, like, almost ambient style work of, here's some music and here's what happens on the farm. Kind of just a nice sit back and relax type of video. That's a nice top down shot. Yeah, for sure. We'll have to keep in mind, guys. Ron has about a 20 second, probably actually up to a 40 second delay once we hear his feedback about what's going on in these videos. I wasn't able to get him a um, real time version of the stream, so he's watching just like everyone else is. But. Oh no, it's not a rotary swather, it is a sickle. But now we're raking. So yeah, this is kind of a cool video about yeah, haying in Kansas. It's not a vlog, there's no talking. It's just the footage itself with sometimes some music in the background. Now here I do see that you are going for some natural sound. Unfortunately that GoPro caught quite a bit of the rattling. That's unfortunate. I'd be kind of curious, Kansas. Is that like a GoPro? I guess really any of the GoPros. The mic isn't very good about. Doesn't mm -hmm. have very good directional mics. It's just it's very good about catching the surround that's directly around it. But unfortunately, when you mount it on a tractor or anything, it, it catches a lot of the tractor. Yeah, especially those older models. The Osmo Action isn't too bad. I test drove that camera for harvest and excellent camera but yeah unfortunately taking i call it natural sound that's when you have sound of the equipment or something like that it is bound to catch some uh, vibration noise but your drone shots are awesome and we talked about golden hour on the stream before it's best if you can at all possible to film in the evening or mid-afternoon even sometimes when the light is when the sun is not directly above you once you can start backlighting some things it makes for some really pretty footage and this is a really pretty cool time of day that he's filming this by the way i'm noticing some, some cuts absolutely incredible yeah i'm noticing cuts really to the music too Kansas. so Always good to try and cut up your drone footage as much as possible to keep things entertaining and get rid of some of the camera bumps as well. And it just really yeah, increases your... Oh, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, I'm probably one of the 
probably one of the best pieces of advice I was given with these drone shots is turn down your, steer, your steering sensitivity. I mean, it's a really good, basically, because you don't want those kind of jerky movements, and it's all possible to cut those out if you can. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is you want nice, fluid, smooth drone movement. If you turn down your sensitivity, it actually does help you. Yeah, so what I do a lot is, first of all, sensitivity, yeah, definitely check that out in the menus. Mavics are horrible as far as their default yaw setting on them. Yaw is when it turns. Oh, 100%. But, so, yeah, step one, turn that down. Step two, when you're editing, because you're always going to have some sort of a camera bump. That's what I call when your smooth shot is interrupted by something. That always happens here and there in drone footage. I do it all the time. But what I do is I edit that out. So I will take a clip. I will cut from one camera bump to the next. And that's my maximum usable footage in that instance. And so if I need to trim that down even more to fit a time gap to cut it to the music, then I will. But I will, at all costs, never ever put a camera bump in the drone footage. And it does take a little bit of time to edit. A little pro tip, by the way, what I do during my edits is when I'm cutting drone footage, my first step will be only cutting down to the usable drone footage. So cutting out the bumps of the camera and only getting, only cutting the stuff that I want to use. Then I will throw music in there and then trim it down even more to fit that music. That's my workflow that I like. Other people might be a different story. I, I think it's, I'm very similar to you, especially as of late, my later drone footage. It's basically, for me, it's kind of been a little bit different. I basically pick the song and then kind of go through and pick the clips that I want to use and then kind of trim them all together. But again, again very similar to you, Riley. But Riley, I unfortunately have to take off from this call, but I do appreciate you having me on, guys. Thank you guys so much for all your questions and everything. Again, be sure if you guys haven't checked me out already on, on YouTube, it's basically the handle you see there. And I definitely will look forward to seeing you guys in different chats. I will for sure catch up on this stream later. So be sure if you guys, uh, I look forward to look, watching the rest of you guys' videos. Again, Riley, thank you so much for having me. I do appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Ron, for joining. Um, yeah, too bad that you have to go, but I'm glad that you were able to take some time out of your day to do this. That's awesome. So have a good rest of your evening, Ron. I'll probably talk to you a little bit here after the stream as well. But thank you very much for joining us. And yeah, be sure no to problem. subscribe to Ron, guys, guys, if you thank haven't. Thank you guys all for watching. And, Riley, thank you so much again for having me. All right. Uh, have a good one. All right. You too, Ron. Bye. All right. Well, that was awesome to have Ron on the stream. Unfortunately, he had to go because I he was out and about, actually, when he called us to join. But he's got to take care of a few things. So awesome that he could join, though. And by the way... Hopefully we can have some more awesome guests on the stream in the future as well. My plan is to have a guest for every stream now because it was awesome having an extra person here to watch the farming, to comment on the farming videos here with me. So if you know of somebody or are interested yourself in joining the stream too, I'll take that into consideration. I can't make any promises, but definitely let me know if you're interested because I am open to ideas. By the way, just a little farm in Kansas. Awesome video. Sorry, I had to stray away from it for a little while there, but awesome stuff. So if you want to check out more of Just a Little Farm in Kansas, be sure to subscribe to his channel. That would be awesome. So thank you very much, Just a Little Farm in Kansas. Yeah, pretty much what we were talking about earlier as far as if you're looking for any points of how to make these videos even better. So... We're going to go ahead and move right along to the next submission here. So next, this is actually going to be a really cool one because this came from the other side of the world over in France. So this one, and it has a description to go with it. Let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. So it's one of his more cinematic videos that he's done, mainly because... Oh man, that didn't translate very well. But I think he's meaning there's an older machine and a newer machine running side by side in this video. And it's from southern France. One of those machines is a hillside combine, by the way, which I've never seen before. So this ought to be an interesting video. So let's go ahead and let's give it a watch for right now. Because the world does not belong to us. Because we are nothing. Leftovers. We are 
Got some interesting narration going on here. Because we are every last dash Interesting in telephoto shot. footage. Oh, nice shot of because something flying there. On sidewalks. Nice. Because you are the needle in my arm. We are equals. We are mirrors. We cut the night. That's kind of a cool crossfade type thing right there. Unfortunately, I don't believe the creator of this video is with us. Just due to time zone differences, it's the middle of the night over in France, so... But... This is a... Pretty cool video. Unique edits and unique camera angles here, too. I like the grain in the foreground and that combine in the background out of focus what do you guys think about this video let me know in the chat i wasn't paying attention to what this older machine is but definitely some really good storytelling going on here Unique storytelling for sure. Got an interesting soundtrack in the background there too. Looks like some really, really nice wheat crop. I didn't even know Renault made tractors. So, here's something to take note on. The creator of this video is doing an excellent job of mixing in natural sound with the music on top. The natural sound isn't too loud or obtrusive, but it's there. Look at that. That's That just looks insane to me. This is a side hill combine? That's crazy. I didn't even know they could do that. Are any of you guys familiar with this sort of a combine? I think running that old one would be pretty fun too. Randy's saying two thumbs up on this video. Awesome. There's some drone talk in the chat as well. Just a little farm in Kansas uses a DJI Spark. Excellent drone to start out on. And then Iowa Dairy Boys says he has a Phantom 3 standard. And that's still not a bad drone today. I started on a version of a Phantom 3 as well. Sometimes I still wish I had it. I feel like this music's getting a little louder here. That was cool. Oh, the poor guy that has to run that combine. No air conditioned cab on that one. <laughs> that half crossfaded thing. Definitely unique effect. We got animals in the background there. Now we're messing with color here. Now we're going backwards. Interesting. It would be cool to run an old combine just like that, but it would not be cool to run an old combine just like that for, uh, like, more than an hour. So that was an excellent video. A lot of cool things going on there. He did a lot of... He or she did a lot of up-close or telephoto-type camera shots, and it just, yeah, 
framed the shots very well, kind of used the uh, rule of thirds, if anyone is familiar with photography or video, to just do some awesome framing with those shots. So, And then the music choice was definitely interesting, and he cut to that music, and the video flowed well with that music. I don't think I saw a whole lot of wider shots, which would have been interesting to incorporate as well. And I don't think there was any drone footage. He must not have a drone, but certainly all right. Not everybody needs a drone to make awesome content. So if you don't have a drone and you want to make YouTube videos, there is no problem with that. I say this on almost every stream. Start with your phone because your phone actually has a pretty decent camera in it. Please just remember to turn it sideways if it's for YouTube. Thank you. Anyway, this was a video that we just watched. We just watched a video from VIP Agra over on the other side of the world, and he did an excellent job. So thank you very much for submitting. That was excellent. We're going to move on to number three of the four videos that I have in queue right now, and that's going to be from IH100. And his video is harvesting wheat with a John Deere 9600 Maximizer Combine and a 925 head. So some interesting and awesome machinery that's going to be in this video. And this is wheat harvest in northeast Kansas. And he also wants to note that this is not the farm equipment that they own. It's somebody else's. So let's go ahead and give this one a watch, shall we? Here we go. Kind of funny to have a Case IH logo to intro for a green piece of equipment. I just think that's kind of funny. But he did mention this isn't his equipment. Kansas is just cool country. Like, all the trees and everything. I'm not used to seeing trees like that all over the place. And we saw it on the Just a Little Farm in Kansas video as well. Just kind of a cool background. Kind of some nice low-lying fields with a... There's a drainage there in the middle. No, it, it is beautiful country out there. I'd love to visit Kansas one day. And these John Deere 9600 combines are awesome machines, too. For the guys that don't need the latest and greatest and don't have the acres to justify the latest and greatest, this is a very economically awesome combine to run. So, back to talking about natural sound, awesome. This is a good use of it, to hear that machine run. And then you're gonna cut back to the music and make it another pass. Looks like a nice crop too. What do we see for yields on this one? If uh, IH100 is still in the chat, I'll bet he is. Just a little farm in Kansas is saying Western Kansas gets pretty plain and not quite like this. That would make sense. So basically Western Kansas is probably similar to Eastern Montana. I know Western Nebraska, <clears throat> excuse me, Western Nebraska is like that. And then you go even farther to a lot of parts of Colorado, or some parts of Colorado, and a lot of parts of Wyoming. That's just desert. Oh, look at those little grain trucks in the corner there. That's cool. Music choice. Definitely relaxing. This is another one of those sit back and relax sort of videos for the target audience that's going to have the attention span for that. We got some more talk about drones here in the chat. Iowa Dairy Boy is saying he crashed his a few times. That's unfortunate, but I've done that multiple times too. And drone repair, like repairing them from those crashes, it really isn't that hard. I have repaired all of my crashes that I've had. Actually, most of my crashes actually have only been a matter of replacing the blades on the drone or the propellers. 
and then it's back up and ready to go. I had to do a pretty advanced repair on the Inspire this spring, unfortunately, but... And that little spark... I actually haven't flown a spark before, but I feel like that thing could hold up to a few things. I've heard stories about the Mavics, people flying them in trees, but then being able to fly out of the tree without having to go get it. I don't know how that ha works, but... But that's the beauty of having the collapsible propellers, too, on those Mavics. Can't remember if the Spark has them or not. By the way, if you're interested in getting a drone, now might actually be a good time to do so, because there is a bit of a trade issue going on. Gotta love politics. But it is what it is, and... DJI, in turn, has decided to raise the price on a few things that we've noticed in their store. So, third-party retailers like Amazon and maybe like Best Buy, B&H, have not changed those prices yet, but it could happen. And, yeah, that's just what's going on right now. Back to that natural sound in this video, by the way. Some good natural sound. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. We're gonna see if things what's later on in this video. So I'm gonna skip to the about six and a half minute mark. That combine's still going. Good to see it's not broken down. Okay, this is kind of what it I wanted to see is a bit of a change of circumstance here with the combine. Not change of circumstance, but change of scenery, or scene, I guess. An additional element of the story. Combine dumping into a little grain truck. Sitting by a county road there. Hashtag shot on iPhone. I don't know if I would have guessed that. But that goes back to what I was saying. This is a good tool to start on. No external mic, no anything. The iPhone does do a pretty good job of recording natural sound if the wind is not blowing. If the wind is blowing and you get wind noise, that's when it's going to be ru ruined. But yeah, if you have the great have ideal conditions for it, that's what I meant to say, then Phones work pretty well for footage. All right, that was IH100 with a video of a John Deere 9600. Excellent video, by the way. So I hope you can make more of these for sure. So a couple pointers for the future. I would look into your runtime and I would actually cut that back quite a bit because we did have a lot of the same thing in that video. And for the audiences that are going to have the shorter attention spans, they're going to want to see something different in those videos. For example, loading, offloading the combine into the truck. I feel like that could happen even way back at the one minute mark. And this could pretty easily be a two minute video and still tell the story that I had to tell. You just have to be selective about your shots, pick the best ones, and then don't be afraid to throw away the rest. I use probably like this harvest video that I'm going to be doing this year. I'm probably only going to be using about 20% of the footage that I shot. So only 20% of it is what everyone's going to see. Anyway, thank you very much for submitting. I hope to see another one shortly. All right, Taylor Farms is up next, and he has first barley swath start of harvest 2019 on Taylor Farms. So fairly recent because they just started not too long ago up there. So... It is barley being swathed for harvest. So up in Canada, they do this a lot. And I'll just go ahead and show you what they do by playing the video. Taylor Farms. He's in Alberta, Canada. Taylor, are you in the chat here tonight? This is what I was talking about, by the way. So instead of straight cutting their crop with the combine, they're going to windrow it first and then they're going to pick it up with a combine later. So this is just a swather cutting the crop down. Nice swather, by the way. Nice crop. 
and yeah nice just big open space up there too beautiful skyline so the sun's at a pretty good angle for this footage like we were talking about a little earlier by the way thank you guys for tuning in to AgriLive. i have statistics up here we have had 243 people stop by at some point in time Right now, we can currently have 19 viewers. So thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting all these guys that are submitting these videos. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe to their respective channels. Most of them are in the chat. So quick little pro tip is you can either tap and hold on mobile or click the hamburger menu on the right to go to their channels and check out some of their work if you see them in the chat or just search them up. Taylor Farms is in the chat, by the way. The swamp that we have is torn apart in our shop as we speak. Oh no. What happened? Did you get everything cut down before it was all tore up or did, did we have something go wrong? That's the one thing about harvest when things go wrong. I mean, you just gotta do what you gotta do, but it's a very unfortunate thing when you are in a hurry to get the crop out in a timely manner. That's going to conclude that video, by the way. So excellent job, Taylor Farms. So we were talking about runtime. That was a pretty good runtime at just about two minutes. It's just, yeah, that's about where my attention span would be with that video. For example, I'm sure there's others that would watch more of that footage, but awesome drone work, by the way. I don't think I saw any camera bumps in there like we were talking about earlier. So the footage was just smooth. It looked good. Taylor Farms is just doing some cool videos lately about just kind of some glimpses of what happens on his farm up in Canada. So thank you very much, Taylor Farms, for submitting. With that, that's actually going to bring us back into a quick break, and we're going to get a couple more videos ready for you to watch. So, And then after that, we are going to have to call it a night. And But don't worry, we still have just a bit more content left. So let's take a quick break. See you guys in a bit. Thanks for tuning in to AgriLive. We'll be right back as we're currently preparing content for the stream. We are always looking for support to help expedite processes like this as much as possible. Please consider supporting the stream by leaving a super chat with a dollar amount of your choice. It's a great way to ensure that we'll still be around and still be sharing agriculture from around the globe in the future. To ensure that you don't miss a future stream, consider subscribing by hitting the button below, as well as enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you, glad to have you here. for one more round of farm videos here before we conclude for the evening. So we've got two left from two regulars of the channel. So Little Farm Big Cameras, not sure if he was able to make it tonight, but he'll definitely be watching the um, afterwards when the archive of the stream goes up. But we have a video from him. It's titled Tractor Ride. That's it, just Tractor Ride. Let's see if he put a description in about what's going on. Yeah, he says, these are our old farm... Our old farmalls, his great-grandfathers own these. So a little bit of family history on his farm. That's really cool. Let's go ahead and check this out. Pretty sweet old tractors. Feeling them up. High energy going on here. The more you cut, paired with more upbeat music, just gives you a higher energy, kind of like a hyped sort of thing. And it's an awesome emotion to evoke in your video editing. 
By the way, this guy's just uh, 11 or 12 years old, I believe, in making these videos. Farms in Wisconsin. Awesome to have him as a top fan of the stream, for sure. Nice time-lapse shot, driving down the road. Taylor Farm says he's listening to our live stream in between hammer blows. Oh boy. Feed barley and swathing the crop allows for the crop to cure naturally without desiccating it. So it's a good way to get the moisture down to proper levels. So that's why that swather was working there. And I've noticed they do that a lot up north. Anyway, we got a change of pace here. We're in the dairy barn. Releasing the cows. Now we're cleaning the barn. By the way, guys, thanks for joining AgriLive tonight. If you happen to just be tuning in, we're watching people's farming videos, and you'll have to catch the recording of the stream later because we were talking to Ron of Hartung Family Farms. It was an awesome interview. Bye, Tizzy. See you later. <laughs> I think that's the end of the video, guys. GoPro, stop recording. Ha! Ah, I like the... Oh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I should be musically inclined. The drum hit at the end. There's a word for that. That was awesome. Excellent job, little farm big cameras. So, notice to take if you're new to making videos, he had excellent energy in his editing, so he wasn't afraid to cut that footage and put some hours into the edit. And it definitely shows there. It was just a very entertaining piece to watch. The story told itself. There was no need for dialogue or vlog-like dialogue at least just absolutely well done so thank you for once again submitting we have one more regular that submitted yet another awesome video and this is Whiteman photography also out of wisconsin he does some awesome work with a drone and yeah you'll just have to check out his channel if you've never heard of him before uh well both little farm big cameras and um Wait a minute, photography. They just do awesome stuff. This is chopping haylage in western Wisconsin. So hay silage. All right. You guys ready for this? Let's go ahead and give her a watch. By the way, just curious. How are you liking the new transitions with AgriLive in this set that's up here right now? I'm certainly open to ideas on how to organize all this stuff. I just thought I'd make it look a little better than before, so. Oh, that's an awesome speed ramp. This is another pretty high energy edit, at least with the music. That's a pretty unique, must be a merger. I think might be what you call that. I will be corrected if I'm wrong, because that's the beauty of the YouTube chat. I love this music. Excellent choice. What do you guys think? So, just some notes here. 
Lots of speed ramping. Good music. Cutting to that music. Good image exposure as well. That's funny. It looks like that wheel's not turning just because of the shutter speed the way it's set up. That's funny. Um, makes for a very visually and rhythmically entertaining video. Also making sure to include different functions of the operation itself rather than dwelling on one piece of equipment for an extended period of time. For example, here's a change of scene. Now we're at a silage bunker unloading the truck. Now we're back to no music and natural sound. So we can hear that equipment at work. A lot of people that are into equipment videos on YouTube definitely like to hear the things run. So it's always good to include this like we've been talking about. Just a little farm in Kansas saying, I may try and do a video with upbeat music. What do you think? Do it. And if it's not your style, then it's not your style, but you're not gonna know unless you try it. So I think you could make a pretty cool video with a bit of an upbeat theme to it. It definitely keeps things entertaining for a bit of a different target audience. So yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to see one. And I know it takes time to do, but By the way, if you guys have just joined from Hard Tongue Family Farms channel or joined Actors Interview, we were talking to Ron earlier. Unfortunately, he had to leave because he was out and about when he did call into the show. But no worries. We're going to get that interview with Ron up for you to watch later. So should be up here in probably about half an hour. And that concludes the video from Whiteman. Awesome. Once again, thank you very much for submitting. That's going to bring us to a, pretty much the end of what we've got tonight. So, guys, thank you very much for being here. This was one of the best streams that I have done. It's great to be back and hopefully to be able to keep these going. So every other week is when these streams will occur. That's the plan at least. So if you haven't already and you're new to the channel, if you came from Hard Tongue Family Farms, excellent channel. Be sure to subscribe here so you don't miss any updates on what we're doing over here. A little bit of background on Agri Studios if you're new. We are a ag focused YouTube channel, but not necessarily an on the farm YouTube channel. So I'll do some videos of my home farm, but I'm not on my home farm all the time because I don't work there. I'm currently a college student and I do video production on the side. So I've got like 50 songs playing at once. That's annoying. I actually only have two songs playing at once, but we'll do that. Anyway, guys, it's an awesome deal to be able to do these live streams. They do take a lot of work, so I'm glad that you guys all come here and are so supportive of what happens here and i hope that we can have some more awesome guests on the stream if you have any feedback youtube at agristudios.com or a comment on a youtube video this will go up later for you guys to watch again i do read all those and i would love to hear from you on what we could do in the future with agri live and the youtube channel in general i have a few ideas for the future we'll see what happens meanwhile Along the edge too, or I'm not sure if we're going to call that that or not, but the next video in the Along the Edge series is going to be one of the best ever. I got excellent footage during this harvest, and the edit so far is coming together awesomely, so I cannot wait to share that with all of you guys. We'll probably have a special Agar Live just for the release of that. I just don't know when that release is going to be, but hopefully in the next couple months. So, awesome stuff for sure. 
Anyway, guys. Once again, I think I've said this like 50 times already, but thank you very much for being here. It's too bad Ron couldn't stick with us till the end, but that's all right. He's a really busy guy and he does some awesome stuff. So it was awesome that he did take time out of his day to be our guest on the show. If you have any other guest ideas, feel free to let me know because we're gonna try and have a guest for every single episode. Episodes are bi-weekly, so be sure to subscribe to get the notifications of when new live streams are about to happen. And if you haven't seen Along the Edge yet, check that out. If you haven't subscribed to Hartung Family Farms yet or the awesome creators that submitted tonight, be sure to check out their channels as well. I did not put links in the description like I should have, but Hartung Family Farms. You can also use the chat to find some fellow awesome YouTube creators out there as well. There were quite a few that stopped by tonight. So that was awesome. We'll be back in a couple weeks with another awesome episode of AgriLife. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time. I didn't turn my microphone off. You guys were hearing me. I was recording an uh, um, Instagram thingy majigger. So you should follow me on Instagram at Riley Slifka. Shameless plug. Okay, bye.